Hi, I'm Grandpa Dave, and welcome to my course, where today I will teach you in just a very short amount of time how to conduct any of the church hymns and have the confidence and the ability to know that you can do a great job in front of small or large congregations. So I'm looking forward to today. You know, in the preface to our hymns, the First Presidency, uh, talks about the importance of hymns and learning them and using them in our lives. There's a short passage I'd like to read to you that says, Know that the song of the righteous is a prayer unto our Father in heaven, and quote, and it shall be answered with a blessing upon your heads. Well, I know that you'll be blessed with this and those that you loved and other people that will be singing to you or conducting they'll all be blessed because the hymns are that special. Before we begin though, I need you to go get a couple of things. First of all, you should have a copy of the hymn book so you can follow along as I teach you how to sing the various types of the hymns. The th second thing is to go to your computer and print out the two handouts that I have there so you can follow along and make notes or whatever on that. That would be great. The last thing is that if you do have a uh, music stand. It might be helpful because in one section I'll teach you how to use a music stand and conduct with that. But if you don't have that, we can make do with something else. So go get those things, pause the tape, and come back, and then we'll be begin the course. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right, are you all ready? Let me have you turn to page, or to hymn number two, The Spirit of God. And let's learn some basics about the hymns first. First of all, you'll notice that it says number two right here. But notice there's no number three. Why isn't it? Because the number refers to the hymn and not to the page. And so hymn three is on the next page. And then we have hymn four down here. So when you're asking people to open their hymn books and go to a hymn, refer to it as saying, going to hymn number, go to hymn number two, rather than page number two. And that will help them understand a little bit better how to, how to get there. So we have our hymn, it's open. First of all, you know nothing about music. No problem. You're not going to have to know too much. Just a few things that I'll explain right now. First of all, what is a lyric? Lyric are the words that we sing uh, when we're singing the song. And so, as you'll see here at the very beginning, we have a one, two, three, and four. Now, <clears throat> when we sing the lyrics, you'll see a group of music up here, another set here, a third one, and fourth one like that. The lyrics, you'll see, number one, the Spirit of God is like a fire is burning. Then we jump down to the second area and say, the latter day glory begins to come forth. Then come down to the third area and the fourth area. In this case, this hymn, uh, this hymn has two pages. Then we come over here. But notice, hey, there's only one line instead of four lines. What is the difference? Well, over here, these are verses, one through four. And over here is what they call the chorus. So you'll sing verse one, and then you'll sing the chorus. Then you come back and sing verse two, then you'll sing the chorus, and so forth for uh, the third and fourth verses. Now, not all hymns are, are this way. A lot of them just have the verses with no chorus. But I wanted to explain to you, so you say, oh, gee, why is there only one line there? Well, that's because you sing it at the end of each of the verses. Now, let's look a little bit more in detail about the mechanics of this thing. If you notice, there's a five lines up here and another five lines down here. This is where they put what they call the notes. Those are those little black dots with a line on it and the circles with a line on them. Some of the lines have uh, little flags on them. Don't worry about those. You're not going to have to learn what they are or mean or anything like that. That just tells the pianists and the singers where to sing up and down and which notes and how long. But you know, for conducting, you don't need to know about those things. And I'll, I'll show you why in just a minute. But there are a couple things that we need to know. Notice that there's a line here that connects the top five and the next five lines. And then the same way here with this second grouping. 
okay? And the lyrics are right in the middle. Well, this little funny mark right here is called a treble clef, and this one is a bass clef. And that just kind of tells people, okay, the sopranos and altos sing in the tr uh, treble clef, and the bass clef is the tenor and the basses for the men. Fine, you don't have to worry about that at all. Then there's these two funny looking uh, things right here. They're called flats. Sometimes they're hash marks and they're called sharps. Forget those, you don't need to know those. Those are just to tell the piano player which black notes to play. Once again, you don't need to worry about it. The, you'll notice there's a little line here every so often. And it's right above, it has it here in the bass clef and in the treble clef right here. Now this is important. The space between these lines is called a measure. And a measure has so many counts or so many beats in between them. And how do we know how many beats? Well, you look over here where it says four over four. Forget the bottom four. That doesn't mean anything for us right now. It's the top number that means something. And that is there are four beats in a measure. So we can count one, two, three, four. Four, and we'll know how many. Other songs and other hymns may have three four or two four. That means there's three beats to a measure or two beats to a measure. And in some rare cases, there has, there's a six up there. But we'll learn how to play the, those with six beats. It's very easy because we'll just play only or count to two on those. So we have four beats in a measure. Now, we can count these very easy by counting one, two, three, four. So before we're going to conduct, we're going to learn how to count and clap and pound our foot a little bit, tap our foot to the music, because feeling the beat is really important. And I want to teach you that as we go to the, each of the songs. So right now, I want you to open your hymn to number 201. And we're going to start with a very simple hymn that you should all know. Joy to the world. Now let's look at this for just a second. Joy to the world. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. What else? Too. In italics, it has how the hymn is supposed to be sung. For example, in Joy to the World, it says jubilantly. Well, you know, that means happy, joyous. If you look over to Come, Come, O Come, All Ye Faithful, that says sing it majestically. So this tells you a little bit how you should be conducting it and how the congregation will sing it. So it's really great. So now in Joy to the World, you'll notice that it says two over four. That's the main thing you need to worry about. And then the bar lines, see where the bar lines are? That's really easy too. So we're going to have two beats or two claps in each measure. Now. I'm going to be singing a little bit, so forget my voice or how bad it is, but you sing along with me and clap with me so that we can learn these uh, together. I'm going to use my music stand and I'll put it right here for a second. And now with joy to the world, we're going to sing it like this. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. So now let's ca uh, clap it on the counts. So there's two counts. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, do it with me now. Clap really hard. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Is that easy? Now tap your foot. One, two, one, two. Now this time let's clap a little different. Let's only clap on the first beat. You ready? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Have you got that? Now, notice how my hand went down on the first beat, okay? And notice that the first beat is right there at the beginning of each measure, just to the right of the measure. And look at the words. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. So all you have to follow is the words and where the bar line is. You don't have to count if you don't want to. But if you do, hey, that's great too. That makes it easier too. So if we did this, 
Joy to the world, the Lord is come. See how easy that is? Now, let's conduct it, shall we? We're going to take our right hand, and you can hold your hand any way you want to. You can have it open. I kind of like to put my fingers together. You see how they're kind of together like that? Now, when we're going to do it, we're just going to come straight down. And so we'll have one, and the two will be down here. One, two, one, two, one, two. So we're going to go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Can you do that with me now? Here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Hey, that's easy, isn't it? Now there's two ways you can do it. You can go here, one, and then stay there and then come back up to do the one again. Or you can come back up a little earlier on the two, so it's one, two, one, two, one, two. Not too hard. Let's try that for just a second. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. So I'm doing one, two, one, two. Or you can just go down and let it rest there. One, two, one, two. One, two. Now, th that way will be easier in the long run when we start counting to three because we'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, or four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we'll learn how to do down here a little bit later for those other ones. But right now you can do one, two, or one, two, one, two. So let's do that. Now, all these hymns that uh, we'll be learning here in these two, four, and, and three beats, and four beats like that. On my website, I'll have all these songs where my wife will be conducting them, and I'll be playing the piano, and you'll see how she's conducting. You can hear it, and she'll be singing it, and you can follow along. So you can do each one. So we'll have examples in, in two beats, three beats, four beats, and so forth like that. So you can go to the ones uh, that you want to learn immediately. We won't do it right now. We'll just do the first lines of the hymn so you can get the the basic idea. So now that we've learned the two beats, let's learn the three beats. Let's turn to 116 called Come Follow Me. Uh, just another little uh, tidbit that helps. If you know that you're going to be doing this in advance, rather than having to uh, uh, f go to all the different pages, notice I have a little yellow uh, sticker right there. And I've got them over here too, so I can know right where to go to them. And when I'm through, I can take them off and put them on the other set of hymns that I will be, be doing. That's just something I do when I'm going to play the piano, the organ, or conduct, so I can go right to them. So come follow me. Let's look at it. What's the most important thing? Okay, it's 3-4, so it's going to be three beats to a measure. And notice it says humbly. So you're going to sing this song humbly and it's going to be a sacrament song so it'll be a little bit slower in there so let me teach you one other thing you'll see that, that it has a note right here and it says equals to 69 to 76 well what does that mean well for those of you uh, who have a metronome you already do know a metronome is just a little box that tick tock tick tock to tell you what the beat is and you can set it for how many beats per minute. So this one says uh, 69 to 76 beats per minute. Now if you don't have a metronome, how are you going to know what that means? Well, there's a very simple way, a very secret here. 60 beats to a minute. Does that sound familiar? Well, that's one beat per second. And how do you do a second is one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. So that's 60 beats per minute. So you have a bass line here. Now this one says play it at 69 to 76. So what that means is you'll play it just a smidge faster. So if this is one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, what we can do is just go a little faster. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, if this said 30 to 40 beats per minute, then you'd go a lot slower. You'd go one, 
two, three, one. You see how that works? So that's just a little help to you to know what speed is. But actually, as a conductor, you'll follow the, the organist and the penis. And so this helps them more than it helps us because we'll follow them how they're, they're playing or how fast or slow. But that might help you if there is no piano or organist to, to do it and you're just doing it all by yourself. That kind of tells you what we call the tempo or the speed of the piece. Okay, so we have Come Follow Me. And we're going to clap it now into three. Come follow me, the Savior said. And if we're singing it, Come follow me, the Savior said. Now, clap with me and we'll do the downbeat, which is the first beat, a little bit louder than the other two. And make it taller. Here, here we go. Come follow me, the Savior said. Okay, now let's conduct it. We're just going to use your hand. Put your fingers any way you want to. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. See how that works? Now let's do it with one and then two, three, small. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. See, it doesn't matter how many beats you have down here. You're just going to kind of tap it here. Or you can just stay there and go one, two, three, and not do anything and bring it back up. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Because the congregation and the accompanist, they just want to know where the downbeat is. The two, three, whatever, it doesn't make much difference. You can go one, two, three, whatever you want to down here, just so long as the downbeat is on the first beat of the measure. And where's the measure? Look for the bar line, and it's just to the right of that. So let's try this again. Here we go. Come follow me, the Savior said. See how easy that is? Now one of the videos will have my wife conducting and me playing so you can do the whole one. And I encourage you to do each one because what you will find is that this is a long piece. How many verses does it have? One, two, three, four. Four verses. Your arm is going to get tired. Okay? And so you do it this way here. You're going to have to get your arm used to it so you're not too tired. Now, let's do one. That's in 4-4. Four, four. And let's turn to hymn number 203. This is another Christmas song. If you notice, I'm filming this at Christmas time, my favorite time of the year. So we'll have a couple of Christmas songs uh, that we'll learn by here. Now this one is Angels We Have Heard on High. Now look at it. What's the first thing we're going to look at? How many beats per measure? What does it say? Oh. Four beats to a measure. We're going to count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now, how are you going to sing it? Joyfully. This is not humbly. This is not a second. This is joyfully. So you have a smile on your face and encourage people to sing loud on this one. And it will be great. So we're going to count to four. So let's clap this one, this first line right here. So it's, Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. Okay, so let me get the note here. Mm. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. Can you do that with me? Here we go. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. Now let's try counting to four, but singing the melody. You got that? Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 
Now let's try it a different way and just doing the downbeat and not the four. Okay, here we go. Oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now we're ready to conduct it. It's almost like clapping, but now we'll just use the one hand. Oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, if you have your hymn book and you open it up, usually I hold it in my left hand. Oh, by the way, you can conduct in either hand. It doesn't matter. If you're left-handed, conduct with your left hand. It'll be easier and hold the book with the right hand. If you're right-handed, hold the book in the left hand. Now, let me encourage you. This is what not to do that I've seen a lot of young Aaronic priesthood hold oh, the way they conduct. They have their book down here and they conduct like this. And they never look at the audience. They don't know what they're doing and they're going like this. And they're not smiling. They're sad. They don't want to be up there. Get me out of here. I don't know what I'm doing. No. Now you'll know what you're doing. Hold your book up so that you can see the audience there. It doesn't matter if you know all the words. You can hymn or hum if you want to and then conduct here. Okay? So it's angels we have heard on they can't hear you, so you could lip sync it, you can hum, you can count, you could use the words if you want to, whatever makes it easy for you. But look at the, the audience and, and smile and give your spirit to them so that they know what they're doing and, 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 and they, they appreciate it. A smile can go a long way and it can help you get the spirit of the music into their hearts. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're doing a prayer to our Heavenly Father. So we sing like that. And with the book, you know, have it right here. Uh, it's easier to hold a small book than a big one. But if you have a music stand, you can have a music stand right there. But don't hide behind it. You know, be up above here and then have your hands uh, above that. So let's conduct with four. Here we go. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. Now, you can bounce. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. See how that works? Not too hard. One, two, three, four. One, two. So, as you can tell, whether it's two, four, three, four, or four, four, it's basically the same movement. So you don't have to remember which way do I go or what do I do. It's one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, one, two, three, or for four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, another secret is if you have a big congregation and they want to see you, you have to put your hand up a little bit higher. So it's one, Three. One, two, three. So the people in the far back can see you. But it's important to have this down. And then also make sure that the organist or the pianist can see you. You know, there's nothing worse than I'm playing around here and I can't see who's conducting. You know, you've got to be able to be able to communicate with each other on that. So now we've learned the two beats, three beats, four beats. What about six beats? Now the six beats is not too hard because what I do is I, I simplify it and I have you only conduct in three going twice. Let me tell you what we'll do. Let's go here to 207. It came upon a midnight clear. Now what's the first thing we look at? Okay. This one says 6, 8. Forget the 8. That Remember the bottom numbers. We don't worry about 6s. We're going to have 6 beats between the measures. Oh, but that's hard. No. Usually what they do is they group the notes in groups of 3 within the measure. So in a sense, you could do this. 
it came upon the midnight clear. Or three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So actually what I'm doing is that it's like I'm cheating and putting an extra bar line in there, right there in the middle. So let's see how it goes. It came upon a midnight clear. Da di da di da da di. Okay, so on there you can kind of hear how it's in uh, a triplet. Da one two three one two three one two da di da da. Bum, bum, dee, Do you see how feeling that beat will help you in, in the conducting of it? Now, uh, there's another thing. Is at the end of the piece, we may hold it a little bit longer. So we do, when we get to the end of the verse, we don't automatically go there. Usually we hold it. So in this case, let's see. In that case, that last note, I put my hand and go, and then I kind of do a little circle, or like I'm flipping some water off my hand. So it's, la, la, di, da, di, di. And so at the very end, or in pauses, you can have your hand just kind of hold it out and the audience will watch you and the organist will watch you until you cut it off. It's called cutting it off when you're, when you're all through with that. So does that make sense? So it's not too hard. The, the, just kind of you're holding that note a little bit uh, with your hand like that and then cutting it off. Okay, now let's turn over to hymn number 206. Not page 206. But hymn 206, it's away in a manger. Now let's look at the hymn. It's reverently, not joyously, it's reverently. How many beats to the measure? Look at it. Three beats to the measure. But you'll notice something a little different. Right before the first measure, there's a note there. This is called a pickup note. And we have to give a pickup sign right here to do away in a manger, okay? An upbeat, it's called an upbeat or a pickup note. So the way we would conduct this, and let me get the notes here. Oh, away in a manger. Do you have that? Away, away. Away in a manger. Which brings me to another thing. You know, you can conduct with either hand, right hand, left hand. Away in a manger. Doesn't make any difference. But if you have a big congregation and they're way out there, you know, they're here for a missionary farewell or, or a homecoming or something like that, and they want to see you, I like to use a stand and I like to use two hands. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. Why? Because they can see that from a distance. And there's also another technique you can use. This. This is a baton. If you have a baton, and I suggest you getting one, because they're a lot of fun to do. You hold the baton with your fingers, like that. Or some people like to have the, the little pinky out, conduct it, and you can conduct with it. Now you don't point it right at the people because they can't see it. Do you see what I mean? All you can see is my hand. So you turn it to the side so they can see the, the white on like that. And also, when you go up, notice that this is a lot higher than your hand. So I don't have to raise my hand way up there. They can see the top of the baton way up there. So on here, Away in a manger. See, my hand doesn't have to move as much. It's easier on your hand than having to go like this. See how my arm and hands are moving like that? It can get very sore. So if you have a baton, 
Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. So having a baton is kind of nice, you know. Get one for your birthday or Christmas or treat yourself and go out and get one or maybe maybe your award will have one. But it's very fun to do it. But if you don't have one, right now, try, see if you have, you, have, you have a pencil there or a pen, get one right now and let's conduct with it and use it as a mini baton. Away in a manger, a crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus, dee dee doo doo doo. Okay, do you see how that works? So a baton can make it fun, and then you could use two hands. Away in the manger, no crib for a bed. So that's kind of fun. You don't have to do it. The, the easiest way is. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. That's the easiest way. But you could add these things as you get more proficient onto that. So, we now know what a, a uh, upbeat is for, for, uh, for the measure and, uh, and for you know, getting into the hymn like that. Or those other ones, we come right on the downbeat uh, for the hymn. So it's nice to learn how to do that. Now, uh, an introduction, we've kind of gone over this before. If you're looking away in the ma manger, manger, they have those square brackets on the first line and on the back, on, on the last line right there. So I'm going to play this last line and see if you can come in for away in a manger with your downbeat. I'll play the introduction. Here's the first line. And now he's going to come down to the bottom line. Now the accompanist might slow down, okay? So it's not the same tempo. So let me uh, slow, uh, slow down. And now we do the pickup. Away in a manger. So let me do that again so you can practice that pickup and come on down. Pick up. Away in a manger. So you can see how uh, going in between verses, sometimes they may even slow down a little bit, you know, at the end of a verse and then come in there. But just be prepared to come on down. Now, we'll talk a little bit more what happens if you get lost or whatever at the, at the very end or if other situations happen because anything could happen. But just remember to smile and have a good time and have your spirit be felt by uh, the congregation. Okay. Let's turn to hymn number 301, I Am a Child of God. This is sung in the uh, sacrament meetings as well as in uh, primary for the children. So let's look at this for a second. How is it sung? Oh, fervently. You know, a lot of times I don't even know what these words mean. What's the difference between fervently and majestically? I don't know. Just you have an idea that it's not slow and solemn. It's fervently with, you know, uh, like that. And we can also see that it, oh, the beats are 80 to 96 beats per minute. So if we have one 1,000, two 1,000, it's got to be a little bit faster than that. One 1,000, two, you know, I am a child of God. Okay, so how many beats to a measure? Four, because it has a four right there, okay, fervently. But now I want to show you something. We talked about slowing down maybe at the end of the introduction or in between verses. But sometimes they like to slow down in the middle of a piece. And when they do that, they have a special character that they put on the music. Look at the, the bottom line right here. 
teach me all that I must do. Now look right above the do, and there's a half circle, kind of like a moon, and then a dot right in the middle of it. That's called a fermata. 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 And that says that you can pause on there. So let me play that so you can hear how it sounds. You're holding it. So it's, teach me all that I must do. Pause. Now, how long do you hold it? Well, I suggest not too long, but it's a little bit longer than it would be normally be. So it'd be, dum, dee, dum, dum, dee, 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 on day. So now the question is, how do we conduct that? Because normally we'd be going, teach me all that I must do. What am I doing here? What I do sometimes is I put my hand going sideways. So, teach me all that I must do to live with him someday. Do you see how I went out here and then I kind of flipped it a little bit like that? You know, day. And you, at the end of it here. But you can also do... Teach me all that I must do. Just like the end of the song. Do. To live with him someday. So it's kind of like at the end of a song like that. But it's a fermata. So when you're going to do a song. This is the third thing that you should look at. One is. How is it sung fervently? How many beats to a measure? 4-4. Four, four. Now. Are there any fermatas in there? Not all the hymns have them, but some of them have one, some of them have two. And so if they have them, if you have your own hymn book, what I suggest is have a red pencil and then circle that fermata, circle the four, circle the fervently, so that, and any notes that you might uh, want to put in here of what to do or uh, things that go right or wrong. That way, when you come back uh, and, and conduct it in a, in a month or two, you can say, oh, well, here are my notes. I know what to look at on that. So fermata, it's really easy on that. Now, let's talk about with this song, how do you conduct this for primary children? It's different. Primary children, most of them are so young, they can't count. They don't know much about music. All they know is they're looking anxiously at you, hopefully. And so now you can conduct it in a little different way. You don't have to worry about counting like this. So you could do it this way. You point for each time you're supposed to sing. Like, I am a child of God. And he at the bum bum. And you can use two hands because most of those songs you're going to know anyway. And you try to encourage the, the children. But you're going to have several that don't want to pay any attention or whatever. And what I like to do is get a big grin on my face. And if little Joey's right there, I'll look at him. And I'll, I'll look at him until he knows that I'm looking at him. And he starts singing. I'm a child of God. And then I'll look at another child. And then I'll look at another child. And so they all know that I'm looking at them and they're paying attention. And I try to get the smile going on it. The other thing is, as the notes go higher or lower, you can put your hands like that. I am a child of God. And he has sent me here. So you're not really conducting the beats, you're doing the notes where they are, if they go up or if they go down. And you don't need to know what the notes are, but if you notice here, you have your five lines, you have a note here, well, you know that the notes are going up. Just look at the top note here. And so, and he has sent me here. So using your hands going down, you can conduct them. Children will have a ball with that. 
The other thing that they really like, if you want to do, is have a baton. Or give everybody a pencil and they have their own baton. And teach them, have one of them come up and, okay, Johnny, now you conduct. I am a child of God. Now, when you're standing right next to him, you make sure you come down maybe on the downbeat so he know, he comes down with the downbeat too. With it. So, I am a child of God. And they like that and they can do that. Another thing is to have them clap because they love to clap. It keeps their hands busy. I am a child of God. And teach them what a beat is so they can feel that beat. There's a, a movie once that I saw that Mr. Holland's Opus and they had somebody in the band that couldn't keep a beat. And so he thought, how am I going to teach him? So he was a football player. So he says, next time I want you to come and put on your football helmet. And so as, they were, as he was playing his clarinet or whatever, he had a, a stick and he would pound on his head so he could feel the beat. So I am a child of God. And so he finally started to feel what that beat is. And the beat is the essential thing. And so teaching these primary kids about beat is important. And you can do that with all the songs, you know, uh, that are in there. They're very easy. So have fun with the kids. Smile a lot with them. You know, use your hands all to get their attention. Let them conduct with you, you know, give them their own baton or bring them up. And uh, it's a great easy way for teaching children. Okay, you've learned how to conduct in two, and in three, and in four. And most of the music is written that way, very easy to follow through the whole hymn. But how many have you sung, Come, Come, Ye Saints? Let's turn to hymn number 30 for a second. It's a little unusual. There are not too many hymns that are like this, but I wanted to share it with you just so you'll know what is going on with this particular hymn. So, first of all, we're going to see how is it sung. Oh, this one says, with conviction. Okay, we'll sing it with conviction. It's in four beats to the measure. And are there any fermatas? Oh, yes, here on the third line, grace shall be as thy date. There's a fermata right there. So we'll circle that. But guess what? It starts with 4-4, four, four, but look at the end of the line. All of a sudden, it has a 3-4 in the middle of it. And then on the next line, it's 3-4, and then it goes to 4-4. Four, four. And then at the end of that line, it goes to 3-4. How are you going to conduct that? Well, first let me show you. You have the bar lines. When they change the number of counts or beats in a measure, they'll put a double bar line that to try to get your attention. So we're going to count to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3. And it goes for two measures, and then it goes into 4. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And in this case, to give you a little heads up, they put the three, four here at the end of the line. So when you come back here, you're going to be counting into three all the way through. So how do you do that? This is where that simplified method really comes in handy because it doesn't really matter how you do it. You go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, now into three. One, two, three, one, two, three, back to four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then back to three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So let's try this. Okay, here we go. Come, come, ye saints. No toil, no labor, fear, but with joy when your way. Though hard to you, this journey may appear. Grace shall be as your day. Notice there's a fermata right there. What do we do with a fermata? We go this way, day. So let me play this now. And you try counting it. Let's count it out loud. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, 
second verse but it's in yes four one two three four one two three four one two three one two three does that sound hard well it's tricky you have to look at the music but if you if you do nothing else and you don't count if you just look at the bar lines and the words you'll be able to do it. So, come, come, ye saints, no toil, no labor, fear, but with joy when your way. And you listen to the piano for where the words are. Hey, you've got it made. Do. Now, there's one other thing that's unusual. Sometimes hymns will have extra verses down at the bottom. Now, when you have extra verses at the bottom, what do you do? Well, uh, let's see if I can find one right here that has extra verses. Um, conducting the downbeat, uh, pause. Uh, uh, hymn number 116. Let's go to hymn number 116. Come follow me. Hymn 116. Humbly. Okay, this is not energetically. Three beats to a measure. Is there an upbeat or downbeat? No, no, just, just the downbeat. Come follow me. But notice that you have verses five and six down at the bottom. So how do you conduct those? Well, very carefully. But what you do is you do the four verses, and then if you're going to sing those, then just follow along the lyrics down here on verses five and six. But now the biggest question as a conductor, when do you do it and when don't you play the extra verses? Well, if you have a large uh, sacrament audience, you know, congregation, sometimes the priest, it takes a little bit longer preparing the bread and the, and the water. And you can kind of look out and say, hmm, we've got an extra large, it's going to take a little bit longer for them. Let's sing all five or all six verses on that. And so you need to get with the organist or the pianist and say, hey, let's do all the verses. Because you've got to be on the same page. And if you say, oh, no, we don't have very many people, we'll, we'll just sing the first four verses on that. Now, <clears throat> having the two of you on the same page on that will really help out. Because there's nothing worse that, that you're conducting and all of a sudden the, the organist stopped. <laughs> You know, and then he has to find his place to get back in to be able to catch up with you. Or vice versa. You go sit down and they're still playing. So make sure that you do that. And you can also ask uh, who's ever conducting, you know, uh, for the sacrament. We're going to do all, all the verses so that they can tell the congregation, hey, we're going to sing all six verses for the sacrament hymn. That way you don't have to tell them. Also, if a sacrament meeting is running long, which happens very often. Sometimes the bishop will only want the first verse or the first and the last verse to be sung. This is something, uh, you know, you could ask the, who's ever conducting, hey, if we're running long, do you want me to uh, do all the verses or just the first and the last or whatever and have them make that announcement from the pulpit. So they say, okay, brothers and sisters, our closing hymn will be Come Follow Me in 116. And we're only going to sing the first verse. Fine. Once again, uh, you know, they, they've made the announcement. But let's say that uh, they forget to announce that. There's nothing wrong with you getting up and as you're getting ready and you say, oh, brothers and sisters, let's just sing the first verse. Or let's sing the first and the last verse. So... Don't feel embarrassed on, on doing that. That happens all the time or whatever. But realize that you can do that. 
And if you've coordinated ahead with your pianist and your uh, and who's ever conducting the bishop or one of his counselors, then you're all set and you don't have to worry about that. Does that make sense? Good. Okay, you've learned basically all the mechanics and the basics of the uh, of how to conduct. Let's talk about some what ifs. Uh, what if the accompanist stops right in the middle of a hymn? What do you do? Sometimes when I've been playing the piano or whatever, I'll look down, or at the organ, I'll look down, and I'll look up, and I've lost my place, and I don't know what to do, so I quit playing till I can find myself. If you're the conductor, just keep on conducting as if Everything is just normal, and let the, the accompanists find their place, and they'll join into you. Don't stop. Don't interrupt. You know, say, oh, what's going on? I, I don't know what's going on, you know, and the congregation doesn't want to sing. You're in charge. You're the conductor. You just keep conducting and singing, and even sing louder with them like that, and, and don't make any Notice to the accompanist, let them worry about that. They'll come in, whatever. They may have to wait till the end of the verse to join in the next one. Don't worry about it. It happens, and just say, if it happens, it happens. I'm just going to continue on with my job. Here's another what if. What if there's no accompanist, there's no pianist or anybody to play? What do I do? Well, it's important to have what note are you going to start on. So like in Come Follow Me, if there's somebody who knows how to play or, or read music, they can say, oh, Come Follow Me, it starts on E. Mm, come fall, come. Okay, and now you, you're ready to go. Come follow me. Now sometimes somebody might say, well, let's start on this note. Come follow. Oh, it's too high. You can go ahead and stop. Let's let's sing it a little bit lower. Anywhere note around there is is fine. And then you can start on that note. Uh, I've had a lot of people, you know, give me a note to start singing on. It's a little too high, and we'll get into it maybe a measure or two. And I'll, I'll say, let's stop. Let's sing it a little bit lower there. You know. Give the brethren a chance to, to sing a little better. Or if it's too low, you know, bring it up for the sisters so they can sing a little bit better. What if you get lost in your music? What do you do? What if I get lost? Well, you still conduct. Hopefully you can find your place, listen to the lyrics and find out where it is. If nothing else, go to the end of the verse. And now you know you're going to be on either the second, third, or the fourth verse. You know you're not on the first verse because you've already sang it. And then you can pick it up there. But just keep conducting, you know, and smile and hum, lip sync. Don't let them know that you're lost. You know, it's, don't give them away, you know, or apologize for anything. You know exactly what you're doing and you know where you are. Just just keep conducting, and just, that's why it's important to feel the beat, because you'll know where the downbeat should be, you know, and you just keep following. And if you lose, you can't find the downbeat, then just play around down here a little bit until you can feel it. Ah, there's the downbeat, you know. Usually you can feel it uh, in a little bit. So don't worry too much about that one. Uh, what is, uh, let's see. You, we've talked about introductions, the style and the speed. Now, what if you want to conduct like, you know, going down here and all these other things? Well, it's very easy to do too. Uh, let's turn to our, in our hymn book, page 384 and 385. A lot of people don't even know that this exists in the book. But here in the book, they have examples of how you would conduct in two, three, four, six, various ways of, three different ways of conducting in six if you want to do it. So it's one, two, three. Now, for, for three, it's one, and then go to the right, and then back up. Now, what happens if you go to the left and go back up? It doesn't make any difference. You can go either way you want, either hand, you know, like that. But three is one, two, three, and four is one. Now, 
for some reason, then they go to the right or the left and then to the right and then up. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, to help you learn how to do that, uh, the dozen or so hymns that are on my website right there, I'll be playing the piano and my wife will be conducting it. And the first verse will be just the straight, so you can see that. So emulate her and do it that way. The second, third, and fourth verse, she's going to do variations. In the last verse, she's going to be using her hands and being energetic like that so you can see how somebody can, can really get involved with it. So in case you want to do that. So each of the verses, each of the hymns will have a variation on there so that you can learn. So right now, if you just want to do it this way and master it, that's fine. The first verse on each of those hymns will be conducted that way. So don't get worried about it. But then as you get better, then you can uh, watch the second and third, fourth verse. But what I would recommend you to do is listen to all four verses and conduct whatever way that you want to, always getting the downbeat in there so that your arm, you, you understand how your arm's going to get tired in there and you're going to build up that muscle in there. Or if you use the baton, do that. And as you're watching it, if you have it on an iPad or, or on your computer screen, see if you can have a, a mirror, you know, uh, hold on just a second. Yeah, you might have a, a mirror like this, you know, that you could put in front of you so that you can see yourself doing it. And I guarantee you by the second or third verse, you may have lost your smile. So start smiling. Oh, yeah, I got a smile, you know, and I'm conducting and I'm doing like this. So you can glance down, make sure that, you know, what am I looking at? So I'm not somber and I'm, I'm very upset that I'm having to conduct this and I want to get off the stand as soon as I can. Who asked me to do this thing anyway? I mean, I'm going to get them, you know, you know and, the, and the boys are laughing at you over there or the uh, young women are laughing at you like that. No, you're confident, you know, and they go, wow. How can you do that? So, so especially those that are going out on the mission. You're going to go out on the mission. And you may be the only one that knows how to conduct. And it may be if you're a missionary, you're going to have to teach others how to conduct. So this simple course, you can review it and then teach them. So there, there may be some people, you know, over in Africa, they're baptizing a ward a month in some cases over there. They don't know what hymns are. They don't know what music is. They don't know anything. And so you're going to have to teach them the very basics right from the beginning. And now that you know what they are, hey, you'll be invaluable to be able to teach these great people about the gift of music and how we sing. So you can do that. So go and, uh, you know, when we get through with all this, Go to each one of these hymns that we have the hymns in some hymns that are have pickups and some that don't. They're in two, four, they're in three beats, four beats, six beats, so that you can see an example of each one of those. And there's also one other thing. I'll have a link on there that you can go to the LDS Church website where they have all the hymns in there and for the church, uh, for the uh, children's songs, and you can listen to it with and without the lyrics being sung, just the music or just the melody or the music plus a chorus singing. So you can practice on that. That's wonderful. You can, you know, practice uh, anytime you want to for the hymns that are coming up the following week. And so now you can find out what the beat is. So the church has a wonderful website out, out on there. It has the music sheets. It also will has a little uh, uh, cursor, a little color that will go around the music and show you where you are so as you're conducting you can see exactly where you are in the music. It's wonderful. So share that with others so that they can learn how to do that too. So uh, it's a wonderful website and there's so just click on the link and then I'll have the list of the hymns and you select which hymn you want to do, click on it and then choose the options. So that will be very great. So in, in conclusion, before you start listening to and watching all the other videos, I want you to know that the hymns are special. They're a prayer to our Lord. They're a way of having the Spirit of the Lord in our meetings. And I testify that they're important. Music is a gift from the Lord. 
And you can ask him for that gift, that you can be able to do this, that you can be able to share music with others. And if you include that in part of your prayers, that the Lord will give you the gift of music. He will hear and he will answer your prayers. And I know that. And you can have fun to it. Uh, one last comment. When you're listening to music on the radio, CD, or whatever you guys listen to, the iPad, you know, try conducting. Try finding where the downbeat is. Try tapping your foot and have fun with that. And so you get into the habit that any time you see, hear music, you know, you, you're already doing this subconsciously. You know, this is fun, you know. And so when you hear the music for hymns, it's going to be a no-brainer. It'll be a lot of fun. So have fun with this, practice it, teach it to others. If you want to learn more about music, I have a special course called Six Hymns in Six Days. It's free, it's on the internet. You can uh, learn how to play the organ or the piano or the synthesizer. And you learn how to play the, what the notes are and how to count and everything like that. So Six Hymns in Six Days, you'd be able to play it as well as conduct it. So I encourage all the missionaries, especially the senior missionaries, to learn how to do that because out in the mission field, you might be able to teach others how to play the piano and organ so they're not having to sing a cappella or without any music. That is crucial. So do that and have fun with it. So this is Grandpa Dave signing off. Have fun. Uh, send me an email note. Let me know what you like or dislike or things that I can improve on on that. There's a link that says contact us and send me your, your thoughts and uh, compliments or criticisms on that. I'd, like to, I'd love to hear from you on that. And if you have a, uh, I live in the Salt Lake area, the surrounding area, if you'd like me to come and do a presentation for your young men or young women or your future missionaries like that, I'd be glad and teach it. It only takes, we could do it within, uh, you know, uh, an hour during uh, uh, the church hour or on a Wednesday on, on uh, when they come and meet for young men and young women. So I'd be glad to do that too. So let me know and I'd be glad to see what I can do to help out. So have a great day and uh, we'll talk to you later.